Good morning, respected Nishamas and my dear friends. We, Group 5 of 8B, proudly presents before you a role play based on the story Princess September. Firstly, let me introduce you to our group members and their characters. Stephen Shanuj as the King of Siam. Stella Joes as the Queen. Neha Lal as the Bird and the Sister Princess. Ethan Philip as Parrot and Veda S. Nair as Princess September. The king and queen of Siam had many daughters and the queen said that it confused her to remember so many names. One day, the king decided to call his daughters by the names of months till he came to the youngest whom he called September. The king of Siam had a peculiar habit. Instead of receiving gifts on his birthday, he gave them. One day on his birthday, not having anything else handy, he gave his each daughter's green parrot in a golden cage. As it is a special day, I'm gifting you all a parrot. Thank you, Father. Good morning. Good morning. Pretty Polly. Pretty Polly. God save the king. Oh, my cutie pie. Good morning. Nothing that the maids of honor could say to comfort her. Not knowing what to do, told the queen and the queen said, What nonsense is this? Why are you acting like a child? Go to bed without any supper. place of your parrot? It's true that I'm not so pretty to look at. But on the other hand, I have a much better voice. <laughs> Good morning! The maids of honor brought him his breakfast and he ate rice with his hand and had a bath in his saucer. He began to sing so beautifully that the maids of honor were so surprised for they have never heard anything like it and Princess September was so proud and happy of it. Now I want to show you to my eight sisters. She went through the palace and called on each of the princesses and for each of them the little bird sang a different song but the parrot could only say God save the king and pretty Polly. And at last, she showed the little bird to the king and the queen. I knew I was right to send you to bed without any supper. This bird sings much better than the parrots. I should have thought you got quite tired of hearing people say, God save the king. The sentiment is admirable and I never mind how often I hear it. But I do get tired of hearing those parrots say, pretty cool. They say it in seven different languages. Things went on like this for several days and the eight and the eight princesses put their heads together. They went to the September and sat down in a circle round her. My poor September, we are very sorry for the death of your beautiful parrot. It must be dreadful for you not to have a pet bird as we have. So we have all put our pocket money together and we are going to buy you a very lovely green and yellow parrot. Thank you for that thing. I have a pet bird which sings the most charming songs to me. And I don't know what should I do with a green and yellow parrot. Well, my dear, it's absurd to talk of your bird when the little fellow flies in and out just as he likes. Do you mind her asking where your bird is now? He has went to pay a visit to his father-in-law. And what makes you think he'll come? He always does come back. If he comes back, and mind you, if he does, you will be lucky. Pop him into the cage and keep him there. That's the only way you can be sure of him. But I like to have him fly my big room. Safety first. They got up and walked out of the room, shaking their heads and left September very uneasy. It 
seemed to the Princess of Jumbo that a bird has been gone for a long while. I wondered what on earth had become of you. I thought you would wonder that. The fact is, I very nearly didn't come back tonight at all. My father-in-law was giving a party and they all wanted me to stay. But I thought you would be anxious. September felt her heart go thump against her chest and made up her mind to take no more risks. What is the joke? There's no joke. But some of Mama's cats are prowling about tonight and I think you're safe in there. Well, just for this once, I don't mind. So long as you let me out in the morning. I don't know what is the matter with me. But I don't feel like singing tonight. Very well. Go to sleep. Wake up! Wake up! Open the door of the stage and let me out. I want to have a good fly while the door is still on the ground. You're much better off where you are. Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Don't be such an old silly. I've put you in the cage because I'm so fond of you. I know what's good for you much better than you do yourself. Sing me a little song and I'll give you a piece of sugar. Why don't you sing and forget your troubles? How can I sing? I want to see the trees and the lake and the green rice growing in the fields. I'll take you out every day. It's not the same thing. The rice fields and the lake and the willow trees look quite different when you see them through the bars of a cage. You must be firm. But if he don't eat, he'll die. That would be very ungrateful of him. He must know that you're only thinking of his own good. If he's obstinate and dies, it will serve him right and you will get rid of him. Perhaps he'll get used to his cage by tomorrow. Good morning! Give a startled cry, for though the bird lay at the bottom on his side, with his eyes closed and he looked as if he were dead. Opened the door, putting her hand and lifted him up. She gave a sob of relief, for she felt that his little heart was beating still. Wake up! Wake up, little bird! I cannot sing unless I am free. If I cannot sing, I'll die. Then take your freedom. I shut you in a cage because I wanted you all to myself. But I never knew it would kill you. I love you enough to let you be happy in your own way. Come and go as you will, little bird. I will never put you in a cage anymore. I will come back because I love you, little princess. And I will sing you the loveliest songs I know. I shall go far away but shall always come back and shall never forget you. Good gracious me, how stiff I am! September kept her window open day and night so that the little bird might come into her room whenever he felt inclined and this was very good for her so she grew extremely beautiful. And when she was old enough she married the king of Cambodia and was carried on a white elephant all the way to the city in which the king lived. But her sisters never slept with their windows open so they grew extremely ugly as well as disagreeable. And when the time came to marry them, they were given away to the king's counsellors with a proud of tea and a Siamese cat. Thank you.